want to do? Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things to say here is uh, let the church say amen. Uh, <laughs> I love that. That's great. I always wanted to try that. My name is Chase. I'm the production director here at the factory. And uh, joined with me is... Uh, Dara Barnes. I serve alongside Chase on the production team. Yeah. How about y'all? Yeah. <laughs> super, super excited, A, that you guys gave me the opportunity to share a little bit about my story uh, in front of all of you uh, with Dara, um, but really just excited to be talking about what you're going to do the other six days. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have been coming here for a while, I'm sure you guys have all heard this as well. But we said earlier that this is like a special service, right? So unfortunately, you guys are going to have to look at each other while y'all worship and while y'all <laughs> receive the message. So uh, we hope that this brings like a, a, a new level of like community and kind of understanding of, you know, what our mission is here. Uh, so today we're going to be hearing from people within the church, people overseas and people in different states that, you know, are factorians but don't go here. Um, and we're going to be diving into not necessarily so much as what the other six days is, but more what it represents and what you can do practically to walk that out with examples from other people uh, so that you can try it yourself if you're not <laughs> doing it already. <laughs> That's right. And, um, you know, as you guys have probably heard, especially if you've been going to the factory for a while, you know, that sort of catchphrase, what you're going to do the other six days. But it is actually based on Matthew 25, the parable of the sheep and the goats, the separation between the righteous and the unrighteous. And I'm going to read a part of Matthew 25 now, starting in verse 35 so that you guys can get a sample. And you're probably very familiar with this parable already, but in starting in verse 35, Jesus says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. And what that sort of passage does and means for us is that there is to be practical application to our faith. It, it isn't enough to just be able to memorize scripture and quote it back whenever you feel like it to impress someone. There are action steps we should be walking out and that faith is work. And in James, it says that faith without works is dead. And uh, I'm going to shout out, I didn't do this last service, but I'll do it <laughs> in here because she's here. Yes. <laughs> Sitting in church every week doesn't make you any more of a believer than if you were to sit in your garage and want to be a car. It's not <laughs> osmosis. And shout out Marsha for that during our uh, Hebrews discipleship group study. Thought that was hilarious. Super relevant to what we're doing, mm -hmm. what we're talking about yes, right now, though. Yes. So, um I'm going to open with uh, a little story about myself. Um, just want you guys to all know I'm uh, not a pastor, not a pastor on staff. So if this message doesn't land, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but, but what I can do is I can testify. Um, so, uh, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So I'm going to recap a little bit of like what the other six days means to me and kind of share a little bit of story about how I found the factory because it has everything to do with the other six days uh, for me. Um, and I guess I'll open up by saying I'm super ADD. And if I jump off, off script here, sorry about that. Um, but 
I, I carry the label like I'm very like uh, quirky in a goofy, weird kind of dad way. Um, kind of like Michael J. Fox meets Daniel Radcliffe in a, in a sense. I, I, uh, <laughs> I get it a lot, but uh, I don't see the resemblance. I can see it. Anyway. For sure. Uh, but I'm more closely like likened to like my personality traits to MacGyver. You guys all know what MacGyver is, right? Does anybody in the room identify as like a MacGyver guy or a girl? <laughs> a girl, I guess, yeah. So <laughs> to make a long story short, what that kind of means is like I tend to fix broken things until they're just good enough. And then I just kind of deal with it until it like either blows up or just catastrophically <laughs> fails. Um, and I think that's a really kind of off the wall example, but uh, MacGyver has some script, and we're gonna put it up on the screen, but uh, a paperclip can be a wondrous thing. More times than I can remember, one of these has gotten me out of a tight spot. Um, never gotten me out of a tight spot, but paperclips are useful, and I'm gonna tell you a story about why I'm MacGyver. Um, I broke my toilet a few years ago, the chain on it broke, and you know the replacement is like $6 at Home Depot, right? <laughs> Instead of going to Home Depot and getting a chain and fixing it the right way, I found some floss in my <laughs> drawer <laughs> and a paper clip, and I tied the floss to the bottom and tied it to the top, and the paper clip went through the little hole, and voila, my toilet's fixed. <laughs> it's still like that, by the way. Hasn't broken really? yet. Really? Oh, gosh. <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> I say all that to say uh, I, did, I do the same thing with other areas of my life where I'll try to step in and fix something until it's like just good enough. And in my professional life before, you know, being here and working here at the factory, which I thank God for, um, I had to really wait until it hit the fan moment. Um, I was really unhappy for a long time and had been praying for a new position and my marriage was struggling and uh, my social life sucked. I stopped working out. I stopped doing a lot of the things that I enjoyed. And we were, my wife and I were praying for a new job, and long story short, you know, God answered my prayer twice. Um, he put in front of me an opportunity to work in a church, but not just a church, this church, and then also another church. So I had the cool opportunity to say, well, God opened two doors for me, which is an amazing blessing. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, I'm, I'm new, I started here like a year ago, and I have a picture of my first day. It's like uh, me and my wife on stage, but um, come a long way since then. Um, but really, when I was deciding on you know where I where I wanted to be, I was still in the mindset of MacGyvering my life. Like where where do I want to go? And when I had two choices in front of me, it was it was cool to see God's faithfulness to put me where I could further His kingdom, but also like feel just so at peace. I am so usually anxious and nervous about sitting up here and standing and talking, but today I feel so, so calm. So it's nice, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And you, you guys may get this a lot if you've invited people to church before. A lot of people go, well, your church is so different. It's so different, and I don't know what it is. Well, I know what it is. It's, Hol it's Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is moving and working in this church, but the practical way that we see that is what I saw when I made my decision to, you know, come and be a part of this congregation. Mm -hmm. It's you guys faithfully following the other six days. And, and, and to me, that, that's what it looks like. It, to me, it's easy because this is my job to work at <laughs> the other six days of the week. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that that is, to me, what it means is, is to selflessly further the kingdom, co-laboring, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and similarly to you, Chase, um, the mission of the factory literally being the application of faith is what drew me here to this church in the first place. I had never really gotten the chance to be a part of a church community that placed so much emphasis outside of the Sunday experience, you know? 
And but that was something that I always I was interested in and just kind of asked about, like, you know, how can I make a difference for God's kingdom? You know, after I leave church on Sunday, what do I do? You know, how is it that I can use the the gifts or the talents or skills or interests or passions that he's given me? and put them to use for him and walk out my faith. I just wasn't even sure what that would look like, you know, and because we all have a calling on our lives. We all have a purpose that God has given us. You know, we all have different skills and interests and passions that have been given to us for a reason. And so we have a responsibility to then ask God, okay, well, how do you want me to use this today? Where do I go? Where are you going to place me? Let's do this. And I have um, a background in, in film production. And so for me, it was kind of like that was my question. How do I, what do I do with that? And um, I was, I've actually been completing my master's. And, um, that you finished. That, right, finished. that I just, just that. finished. You finished. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, I, I came to the factory as an intern as part of completing my master's, and I got to put some of those skills to use working alongside Chase and the rest of the production team and, and making videos and social media content and writing some things with them. So it's just, you know, walking out our faith the other six days, it just opens the door for a whole new dynamic to being a follower of Christ, and it's very exciting, and um, it's great to be a part of a church that encourages that. So that's what what you're going to do means for me. Okay, so that's enough of us, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, this is a service where you guys are going to see people just like me, just like Dara, just like you guys, um, hear how they practically walk out the other six days. So... Uh, we're going to go ahead and invite uh, Miss Patrice, excuse me, Patrice and uh, Marietta to the stage. Let's give them yes. a hand. Yes. Come on down. All right. We should start doing walkout songs like baseball, you know? Oh, yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, no one gave you microphones. Oh, good. I got it. Don't worry about it. Sit down. (laughs) Please. (laughs) Okay, let's go. You guys comfortable? Yes. That's good. Yes. Oh, man. And we had such a a great time talking with you guys in the first service. So excited to do it again. You guys both have such great testimonies and experiences. So thank you for joining us again this morning to share that with everyone. So we'll start with you, Miss Marietta. Um, So let's see. What does walking out the other six days practically look like for you in your life? How does it point to Jesus? And then what kind of life change have you experienced or witnessed in others as a result? Make sure the microphone is closer as well. I know, I'm sorry. I don't like my voice either. It's okay. (laughs) So nice. Um, um, My my pattern for my life has always been there is a scripture my husband um, said when we first, 57 years ago, he came to um, our relationship. We both were saved when we were children, when we were 12 and 13 years old. And he had a scripture, um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. And that became a foundational scripture for me. And then the scripture, I had it written down that you read. (laughs) And so I know it was God that told me to do it. The other one that's the foundation is whatever you do to the least of these, you Mm -hmm. do it as unto me. Mm -hmm. And so all your ways, all your ways was always a foundation. I mean, even the little small things. So one example of that is um, when my husband and I, we were young, we had three small children, and we weren't poor. We were poor. (laughs) There's a difference. 
and mm -hmm. I had the responsibility <laughs> of um, all of you that don't know him. He's a big man. He's he was six six. He's six five. You know we shrink as we <laughs> age. <laughs> But he had a huge appetite. I mean, just he ate and there was nothing of him still. But um, I asked the Lord. I said, okay, I'm going to apply this scripture. I need direction as to what am I going to do with this little bit of money. I have $50 that had to last us for two weeks. Mm -hmm. A family of five. Okay. So... I asked the Lord, I said, God, you got to direct me. You, you got to tell me what I, this scripture, I'm going to apply. He showed me to a store I'd never been in, in a, in a part of town. I, I, I couldn't find it again if I, if I had to. He directed me, turn, turn right, turn left. I came to the store. In the store, I said, okay, God, now what? Now what? <laughs> every down, every aisle. I went. I said, what do you want me to do? Down this aisle, it was buy one, get three free. Oh, buy okay two, now. get one free. I mean, you could just, down every aisle, I asked him. <laughs> I got halfway through the store, and my oldest daughter had to go get another basket. It was full up to the top. <laughs> when he took me through to the register, when he took me to the register, the lady rang up the thing. She thought it was a mistake because she ran up both baskets. So she rang it up again. <laughs> I left the store with two full baskets of grocery for under $50. Oh, my goodness. The scripture really applies if you will apply it. Okay. All right. We got a point for that? Or? Right. God <laughs> wants to do so many things. That mm. I, he does it even in my, that was when we were young. But I, I, I was telling them, I, I'm going to share this with you. I was on, <laughs> I was at another church, and they did outreach. But they they were slow about doing inreach. If you understand, they ministered to those outside, but they didn't do so much for the people that were working and living and you know it within the church that had a problem. And I was on my way to, um, I, I pray and ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do today? What is it that, who can I reach today? And I was, he told me in that prayer to reach out to a family, and I found out that their father had been in the um, recovery, and nobody from the church had reached them, and, and so I was mm -hmm. taking food to them, and I had an accident. There was a truck that turned in front of me, and I... I <laughs> I've had several accidents. It's like there was a bullseye on my car <laughs> over my life. Mm. And I prayed and I said, God, I don't need to be in another accident for the rest of my life. Share it with somebody else. You know? oh my gosh. <laughs> Here I hit this truck and he turns in front of me. He makes it through two lanes of traffic. The third one, I'm in the third one and, and he didn't make it. I'm praying and praying. I'm hurting I mean, I wasn't in a small car. It was a, a Toyota Avalon. And I, bags went off. Mm -hmm. the, the glove compartment flipped out. I'm hurting. My right foot is hurting. I mean, I'm just in pain. And I'm saying, Jesus, Jesus, help me, help me, help me. We were across the street from a fire station, so they came right away. And I'm saying, Jesus, Jesus, help me. They asked me, are you okay? Is there anything else? Or, no, it's my foot. The tennis shoe that I had on came off. The left one was on. The right one was gone. Never found the shoe. Never found it. I'm saying, Jesus, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Please, Jesus, help me. And the little guy says, young uh, firefighter, he's trying to put the boot on my foot. He said, ma'am, he helped you. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. And I'm, Jesus, Jesus, please help me, help me, help me. 
I'm in pain. And I tell the Lord, I said, oh, God, please, I'm trying to take this food to these people. So he's saying for the third time, he said, Jesus helped you. I'm just ignoring him because I'm in pain and I start speaking in tongues and, and the devil's telling me they're going to think you're crazy. I said, I don't care, I don't care. <laughs> when I got out of the car and they put me in the um, stretcher to go in the ambulance and I looked back at my car, there was no motor. Mm. It was all metal. There was no tires. The steering wheel should have come up into the car. It didn't. <sighs> mm. Mm. My foot was shattered. My ankle was shattered. There was a nine-hour surgery. I mean, when I saw that, I said, yeah, he helped me. I understood what the fireman meant. He didn't stop. He had a professional surgeon an orthopedic surgeon that should not have been on call because he had three different mm. offices waiting on me. Mm. I had a nine-hour surgery. Mm. I'm sharing this. I believe that God wants you to know that just because you belong to him, it doesn't mean you're not going to go through something. Okay. All right. But he is with you there mm. in it. Mm. And through that nine-hour surgery, I w before I went under, I was praying. I said, Lord, because I had been praying about leaving the other. I don't jump churches. I don't jump nothing unless I talk to God first. Mm. I got to get the approval from, from him first. Then I, I asked him, I said, can, um, I had been asking him if I could go. He said, no, no, no. When I was laying there, he said, you can go now. The next words were, where? <laughs> I don't go anywhere until God tells me to go. Where, where, where do you want me to go? And he told me the factory. And I love the factory because they don't do, just do outreach the other six days. They do in-reach. Mm. Mm. And I love it for that. Thank you. That's great. So I'm, I just wanted to share that with you mm. because I'm an ambassador for the kingdom. Amen. And the way that I live, the way I talk, the way I serve should represent the kingdom that I'm supposed to represent. Amen. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. That was great. That was different than the nine o'clock. You guys got a treat. That was great. Good job. <laughs> and uh, Patrice. Uh, same same questions for you. Uh, you know, we want to know what it looks like to practically walk out the other six days in your life. How you point people to Jesus and really uh, just give us, you know, something maybe that you experienced. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll turn it on. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Good morning, factory family. Um, First of all, again, I want to thank you guys for letting me be up here. I feel blessed that I get to talk with you all. Mm. Um, and I know my family is super blessed to have walked through those factory doors um, a little bit over a year ago. And I remember walking through that parking lot and I saw a bumper sticker that said, hashtag the other six days. And I'll tell you right now, I knew immediately what that meant. Mm. And I said to myself, I'm really going to like it here. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said earlier, that was way before I heard the first song or heard PK open his mouth. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel the other six days, I just sort of need to tell you how God brought me to what my other six days are now. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a home where my mom was extremely strong in her faith. And she lived a life of service, which meant we lived a life of service, whether we wanted to or not. It was just the natural <laughs> thing. It was in my house. We just did it. Um, so my sister and I, uh, inspired by that, always wanted to work with young people. 
and she taught karate and wanted to teach karate to troubled kids, and I was a theater major, and I wanted to bring the arts to troubled kids. Um, so we partnered or volunteered for a very large um, nonprofit. And as we were at that nonprofit for quite a while, we watched as money was coming in and we were really kind of confused because we never saw the money going where we thought it should, which was the kids. Mm. So God kept telling us, I, I, I'm not sure why it took us so long, but God kept saying, you guys need to do it on your own. You need to go out and you need to do this. And there were a lot of haters, a lot of people telling us we couldn't do it. And a lot of people saying, you know, there's no way and don't quit your job and all of this good stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, we struggled to feed. We did it anyway. We started my nonprofit called Hearts to Nourish Hope. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, we struggled a lot. We were, I remember we did a community service project and we were struggling to feed 30 families a month. Uh, and work with the teens. So now if I fast forward now to my other six days now, uh, I have Hearts to Nourish Hope has been in Clayton County for 27 years. Mm -hmm. And thank you. And um, in Gwinnett, we've been there uh, going on seven years. And we work with young people that are 16 to 24 years old, majority of which come from the court system. We have a transitional living home for young men that are 18 to 24 year olds that may be aged out of foster care, just got out of jail, or for whatever reason are homeless. We um, feed over 300 families a week mm. with us and our yeah. partner locations. It's all God. <laughs> Not me, it's all God. <laughs> I promise. Um, and we actually just during COVID, we got housing money where we were able to help people stay in there homes and then even prepare for when that money runs out to hopefully continue to not be evicted and stay in their homes. Wow. Um, Jesus, if I didn't bring Jesus to work with me every day, I would never be able to do it. Mm. Uh, mm. Mm. Absolutely. I, half the time I feel like I have no idea what I'm going to do or what I'm going to say next or where the next bed is going to come from, but God always shows up. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. I, I can remember sitting in, an, in the office with my sister, and we were about to give up. We were spiraling quickly downward, and one of the kids that was supposed to come into our home, he committed suicide. We had people popping positive for drugs at, at our place. A kid that we thought, he's on the right track, he went back to jail, and we were just giving up, and there was a knock on the office door. And... It was one of my employees saying, there's a guy here to talk to you guys. And this guy walks in, 30-year-old guy, and he said, I was driving my truck by, I saw the sign, and I knew I had to come in here and thank you all. And it was one of my kids from a long time ago who now had a family of his own. He proceeded to tell us everything we did for him and told us about his family, that he's now a CDL driver, that he's very successful and he wanted to give back to us. Mm. So talk about God showing up and God's yeah. timing. Because mm. <laughs> I was giving up. We were mm. about to give up. Um, the other thing is the, the, the thing, the common denominator <laughs> that is missing among these young people is Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with kids that have or they're broken they have no clue about anything unconditional much much less unconditional love trust any of that mm. so I get to witness not just God showing up in my life but God showing up in their lives yeah and mm. I get to see them pulled from the darkest most unthinkable things and I have been blessed to even see them come out on the other side, which yes. you don't always get to see that. Right. Oh. So, so good. So my good. other six days, God has blessed me with my dream job. Mm. Yeah. Love it. Thank you for listening. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome oh. to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Great so job. So amazing. Let's give him a hand again. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Can someone help him off the stage, please? Thank you. Examples.
evidence of some true life change. Yeah, no, I, I, that was that was great. That was really uh, special. I like. Thank you for taking your time and um, really speaking with uh, power and, uh, and emotion there. That that was really good. Um, something that I, I really like that uh, that Patrice just shared is, you know, these kids uh, that that don't know Jesus, that don't have a home, or you know, aren't troubled families on the streets, whatever the case is. The common denominator being not knowing God. Um, we're getting ready to watch a video from our international partner, Man of mm -hmm. Ministries, and Maurice, um, who's, he hits the head on the nail with that phrase right there. I mean, he, he talks about, uh, you know, the way that love looks to someone that's homeless or hungry is food. Mm -hmm. And it gives us that practical right. way to show love without hitting people with Bibles, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> right we yeah. demonstrate that through our actions. So Absolutely. that was great. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, dim the lights and play the video from Maurice. And uh, we'll get back with you in a minute. Uh, when I connected the factory charge and God allowed me the opportunity to come over there, and uh, witness and experience just how the factory church family is not just speaking, but walking out the other six days idea, I was able to learn a lot. And what I learned, I brought it back home and I've been able to walk it and I've been able to embrace the other six days idea. And like I said, as much as important um, that this the Sunday that so many people want to dedicate it aside, maybe because they feel like if I don't, I'm not nice on Sunday, then I might uh, encounter God's wrath. Uh, as much as um, uh, that is a very important day for people to do good things, like I said, the other six days of the week, they are no less important than uh, when it comes to walking out or uh, living out the life for which we have been created to do. For a, a hungry person, love looks like food. And for a naked person, love looks like clothes. And for a widow who does not have a home, love looks like a shelter over their head. And for a sick person, love looks like medicine. So we have an opportunity to demonstrate love, to make the love of God become practical, mm -hmm. that the people who need it desperately can be able to experience it through the good works that we do. And so that is what uh, the other six days means to me. But as Christ followers, we are to be obedient in our commission to preach the gospel. And when... I talk of preaching the gospel, I see Jesus as a loving Savior and that he loves us every single day and every single moment. And when we are believers, when we believe in Christ, um, and I think and I relate this to the other six days, then I see an opportunity to co-labor with Christ Jesus to love and to serve the people and to heal the broken, the hurting and the hopeless of this world. So we have an opportunity to work and to walk hand in hand with Christ as believers who are followers of Christ. Jesus said that, look, you are the light of the world. You are a city that is set up on a hill, a city that cannot be hidden. And it reminds me, uh, Chess, that uh, I, I'm not supposed to uh, light, uh, put my light on, on a specific day on Sunday, and then uh, uh, bring it down, put it under, and then walk my life away from Christ uh, the other six days and then wait for that one specific day. So when <laughs> Jesus said, you are the light of the world and you are a city that is set up on a, uh, on a hill that cannot be hidden. We cannot be hidden on Monday. We cannot be hidden on, on Tuesday. We cannot be yeah. hidden on Wednesday. We are supposed to, uh, the light is supposed to illuminate. It's supposed to shine all through even on the other six uh the other six days um no the bible said no that the light nor nor does the light uh does someone light a lamp and put it under a basket but it is put on a lampstand it is put on a place where everybody is able to see it the widows are able to see it uh, they sit by our caregivers 
going to the homes of the widows. That is what we do here. They go to the homes of the widows with the light of Jesus every single day, and they read the Bibles for them. They wash their clothes. They cook food for them. And they light, their light shines through their acts. Through their, uh, uh, through their actions and through their words. And it gives light to all who are in the house. And so, and, and so uh, 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 when Jesus said, let your light shine, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. It helps me to understand that when we do good works to people, when we feed the orphans, God is glorified through those good works. When we feed the widows, God is glorified. Mm -hmm. When we go to our neighbors and we give clothes to them, when we invite the community in our church compound and uh, we have them, uh, have we feed them food, we give, we show them love through their needs, these good works, they glorify God. And this is how we let the light of Jesus shine. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to finish by saying that just as Christ was willing to bring light, to bring life, to bring love, and to bring hope and forgiveness to us. Mm -hmm. So Christians, you and I, we are called to step out in faith and follow Jesus. We need to follow him and work with him in delivering the same message to the world that is desperately looking for a savior. Yeah. So thank you so much that I can be able to do this alongside uh, at the factory church that believes that we are not called for Sundays. We are not called just for the Sabbath day. We are called to live uh, the life that God created us for the other six days and i'm glad we are living that life right here in kisumu kenya and i was able to do that with a factory team from america and it was amazing the result the impact the seed that they planted continued to blossom and there is so many good things happening and the name of god is being glorified maurice man you preaching brother yes i'm a preacher <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, left that little part in there. I thought it was funny. Yeah, I guess he uh, had no idea that I knew he was a preacher already. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought he would throw that in there. I love what he says about how, you know, we are called to be obedient in, in preaching the gospel. And then he transitions into saying that that then can lead to serving, you know, because some people are like, well, you know, I don't have, I don't know that much scripture that well. And so you sort of feel kind of anxious when it comes time to like try and remember the exact verse for something. It's like, okay, well then demonstrate what the verse is talking about. That too shows Jesus and communicates the gospel as well. So I really love that he said it that. reminds me of that one sermon that uh, PK preached where he said, you want to win, got to work. Yeah. So that's a... Uh, Definitely a powerful message from Maurice that he is, he is just as excited as that video as he is in, like on the on the phone. So <laughs> I enjoyed that. Um, but we're gonna move into our like second group, um, and I say group, but it's uh, we're gonna invite Wendy Clark to the stage. Yes. Um, so let's give a hand to Wendy. Come on down. <laughs> and uh, when it comes to serving and putting in the work. Um, definitely yeah. can't think of a, a, a better person than, uh, than Wendy. She's here almost as much as I'm here, which scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're Is doing. No, it's not on it. You'll turn it on. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to ask you the same thing, Wendy. Um, you know, we want to yeah. hear what you do during the week, um, how that points people to Jesus and some life experiences that have happened to you or something that you may have witnessed um, since, like, practically walking out the other six days? Walked through the story. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give her a hand, everybody. She's a little nervous. It's okay. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> First of all, I wanted to thank God for giving me the courage to mm -hmm. come up and be on this stage. Amen. Mm -hmm. And second of all, I want to thank my factory family for believing in me that I can do this. Yeah. Because, and my husband, 
I got you. Um, As everybody knows, I don't like stage. I don't like, you know, all this type of stuff. I like behind the scenes type of thing. Me too. I'm usually back there. Yes, you are. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So as everybody pretty much knows me, I was born in Trinidad, in the Caribbean. And... You got one clap over there. Shout out. <laughs> shout out to the Caribbean. Is that Carol? Right. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> but um, my favorite Bible verse has always been 1 Corinthians 13. Since I was little, even before I had a relationship, have a relationship with Jesus. Um, I just, it's, it's true. Love is the most powerful thing on this earth, in this entire world. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care much money you got, I don't care how tired you are, I just don't care, it's just love. Mm -hmm. And if you really understand that Bible verse, you'll do God's work, you know? And Jesus lives in me. He lives in this body. My life is not about me at all. And people will tell me, um, you know, Wendy has that amazing heart and you know, (laughs) go to Wendy if you need something and whatever. It's not about me. It's, it's, you know, my testimony is for you guys to look beyond the flesh of who I am and just literally watch what God's doing through me. Mm-hmm. I have four autoimmune diseases, uh, chronic heart failure. I, I mean, my heart right now is going to thump right now, literally, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Shelly, you know, you can, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> She's ready. But, um, when I was four years old, they had this vagrant in Trinidad, and he was blind and in a potato sack. And he would curse everybody out. And he was just scared. He was hurt. You know, everybody treated him horrible. But I hugged him. I bought him chocolate. And I was four. I always tell my husband, my heart is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing to other people, but I think to me it's a curse. It hurts me because I hear people won't even want to come to me and ask me to do something because they know when they ask me to do something, I don't do nothing halfway. (laughs) I go all the way, (laughs) you know? And, you know, my love is is hard. It's hard to love me. You know, people say they love Jesus and stuff like that. If you truly love Jesus, you'll be able to show that love. Mm -hmm. And my circumstances and situations as a travel nurse... I walk into every situation and circumstances with God. Mm -hmm. I had one that was um, Nazi stuff all over the place. And as you know, you know, I don't, not blue eyes and white. And, um, but, you know, I walked in with God and I stayed professional. And I just literally watch people smile at me where they were being really scary and ugly. I don't know. I have so much to say, you know, your next six days. But my next six days is 365 days of a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, uh, Last week, Thursday, they had a a homeless person in Marshalls. And I went to walk away. I saw in the corner of my eyes because I told God, I said, I'm just tired. I'm exhausted. I'm absolutely exhausted in every aspect of my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm exhausted. And all of a sudden I knew, it's like God grabbed my ankles and I was on the knee, on my knees doing, um, checking his pulse. And the paramedics came and the guy said, um, you know, <laughs> you know how many bums live on the street? What do you want us to do with this one? And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, mm-hmm. all I could literally feel was God's tears just pouring down on that gurney, saying that's his child, you know, he created, and it's like, wow, is this really what our world has gotten to? Mm. Are we so hateful, ugly, selfish, self-centered? I mean, it's all about the I factor in this world. It's it's really sad, you know, and I, I watch people, they love who they love, or they go out of their way to help the ones they care and love about. Mm. Um, but, you know, God forbid, you know, God puts something in front of you, at least try, mm. you know, try. And God 
trusts me enough to know that I won't walk away from his children. That's why he spun me around last <laughs> week, Thursday, and he was like, dude, Wendy, what, what are you doing here? You know, you are about to walk away from one of my children. Mm. And that woke me up. You know, just in this world today, you guys, I mean, just show kindness, you know, That's show right. common courtesy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just, just be kind, you know, walking out the next, um, what am I saying? Walking right out the next beside. six days, you know, when you walk with God, literally walk with God with everything that you do in your life, you won't care about politics, you won't care about who got the COVID shot, who didn't get the COVID shot, you, you know, you <laughs> just... Just love. Next six days is just showing love and kindness. You know? Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> You're good. Thank you, Wendy. That was great. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much, Wendy. <laughs> great job. Yes, you know. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Miss Marietta and, and Patrice and 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 Maurice via online and the video. Um, thank you all for participating in in this day and helping to really show us and give an example of what walking out our faith can look like and the impact that it can have on us, but then in the others that we come into contact with for God's kingdom. Um, it's been incredibly inspiring and encouraging, and I hope that you guys have, you know, been moved by some of the stories that you have heard. But wait, our, there's more. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but wait, there's more. Before we wrap up, we have one more brief message um, from a friend of the factories. Miss Shirley Snyder. Yes, she she watches every week, and she's in Louisville, Kentucky. So check this out. Hello, my name is Shirley Snyder, and I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I was first introduced to the Factory Church by my daughter and son-in-law, Shireen and Randy Douglas. They spoke with such enthusiasm, so I figured the next time I visit, I want to go to the Factory Church. And so I did. The Sunday that I visited, there was a video about African well digging. It just touched my heart, and so I decided to make that one of my projects. And so years later, I'm still supporting digging the wells in Africa for my people. God bless. Have a wonderful new year, and know that God is on our side. Thank you so much.